Alright, uh, my natural world video. It's been a little while since we did one of those. Uh, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> um, so anyway, the background image is a leopard slug, which I hadn't seen in New Jersey before. It's the first year I've seen them. I've seen three or four of them, which is kind of strange for them to show up in such numbers all at once. Uh, anyway, the other image is a uh, deer. It's in the backyard of the place where I clean the swimming pool. It's just kind of funny. I mean, they're really not afraid of people at all. I was yelling all kinds of obscenities at it. it. Finally walked a little bit further away, but it didn't take me too seriously. So back to the leopard slug. Um, yeah, they're about four inches long, pretty big, four times bigger than most slugs around here. And they actually eat other slugs, which is kind of good, I guess. But they're kind of kind of vicious, I guess. They also do the sex thing from like a, a long thing of mucus or hanging upside down from mucus, which is kind of funny. Uh, the little hawk, you can hear him, I think. Um, yeah, he was just, there was these hawks for over a month. They were sitting in the trees, yapping back and forth all day, and they were really quite irritating. Don't hear them near as much now, now and then. So, I think they found somewhere else to, something else to do with their time. <laughs> it's uh, interesting to have them living, you know, right in a tree in your front yard, but, um, you know, the charm wears off pretty fast when they just keep making that noise over and over and over. <laughs> you know, it's not that they sing a new tune or anything. Uh, same old crap. So, anyway, a little more of this here bird stuff, and then we'll move on to something else. Yeah, the slug was just eating some cat food, so he's in the background there just slugging around. And, uh, see so yeah, how the hawk's gonna fly a little here, but hard to catch the flying part, so I didn't. Some more deer pictures. These are some, just some deers in a field. And, uh, they had some, like, year-old fawns with them, you know, so it was like two does and three fawns, so that's about how they're breeding now, it's, you know, it's more than a replacement every year, <laughs> it's a lot of deer, they really gotta fix the problem, it's eating everything, yeah, might start eating leopard slugs, don't know, so they'll eat everything else, trees, bushes, plants, doesn't matter. Anything kind of green that doesn't smell horrible, they'll eat. Alright, this is this um, blue heron. Uh, it's been around here for about 15 years. It's always by itself. It just wanders the stream from the pond, then it goes for, for about a mile or two, it follows the stream, and then works its way back again. Just does that all summer long. Um, it's... Um, yeah, it's just kind of a lonely, sad bird. I can't feel sorry for it. I see it every day whenever I'm walking. And uh, it flies, you know, in the stream below the tree line, like through the branches. And it's, you know, I don't know how it gets away with doing that every year without crashing into something. It's just a dead catfish on the bank. Somebody must have caught it, I guess, just left it there. You know, flies had laid their eggs, and, you know, they laid them underneath the fish, you know, around the edges to keep them in the moist area, you know, little maggot eggs. Um, so, yeah, not a, you know, not a, some of the less charming parts of nature. Uh, okay, just a little garter snake I came across as I was walking. He was kind of slow. It was the morning, but he was still slow. <laughs> and, uh, but they're kind of a pretty snake, common snake no threat, no non-poisonous, don't even have fangs, just little teeth, and, um, you know, but whatever, it's a, but it did sort of remind me that um, this is sort of what evolution does, I mean, as, as, you know, organisms become more complex, they get, grow arms, legs, they're walking around, and then they go back to being a snake again, you know, they go back to the flatworm design, a mouth and a digestive tract, and that's really what it's, nature's about, um, you know, that, that old design is always going to come back and work again in most circumstances because it's it's a matter of efficiency. And, you know, they're durable. They don't have to eat every day. Um, you know, this is what life will do um, because it's, 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 it's a hardy design. Um, but it just points out, like I said, that, you know, even if you have legs or you grow wings, you you might evolve back to this, back to a worm, because the bottom line is consumption <laughs> and reproduction. 
and there's nothing else going on really. It's just figuring out how to efficiently get yourself into the future. So, background is now the hibiscuses that I have growing. So they're the only things the deer haven't eaten this year, so they're kind of nice. I used to have flowers that these are big flowers, or maybe six inches, seven inches, eight inches across. But I used to have some that were just huge, and uh, but I blew it somehow and killed the the parent of that plant without getting sufficient seeds from it, or at least the seeds were polluted too much. So um, you know I don't have any really huge ones, but uh, you know they're okay-ish. At least there's something with flowers on it in my garden. Because everything else has just got decimated. Except for one plant, it's called a snake weed or whatever. It uh, looks like a marijuana plant, the leaves, but it stinks. And uh, deers don't seem to like it much. So anyway, moving on. Come on, get to it already. Yeah, come on. There they are. So that's the snake weed. And so at least it's some. See, that whole plot was full of um, all kinds of zinnias and petunias and other stuff and the deers ate everything in there so that's the only thing I had that was still growing so I planted those there's an example I mean there should be this little purple flower here on this verbena I mean the whole plant should be just covered with the purple flowers but every night they trim them down even though there's deer netting over it it's just a little praying mantis they're way behind this year he's about half the size he should be